keep calling this the Chinese virus. There are reports of dozens of incidents of bi bias against Chinese Americans in this country. Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term. He says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? A lot of people say it's China. racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. That's why comes from China. I and want to be accurate. About yeah, please, John. Please. You. Are you I have the great. Term? I have great love uh, for all of the people from our country. But uh, as you know, China tried to say at one point, maybe they stopped now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm president. New, no, you can't call it Chinese. That's racist. It comes from China. You lied and I died. 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 It happened because of me, Georgie. Me. No, 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 no. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Be sure to comment your favorite nicknames for the coronavirus. Personally, I'm a big fan of Kung Flu, but we're here on a wonderful day. The second day of spring, casual Saturday. That's a thing now because it's getting a bit too hot for the suits, but we're here to answer a very simple yet oh so complex question, which is what caused the coronavirus pandemic? And the answer to that question is actually China. Specifically the Chinese government and I'm gonna have to be careful here so that YouTube and Google don't get mad at me since they're pals with the Chinese Which is why I can't ask who is responsible But rather what is responsible because I wouldn't want to assign any blame that would be offensive But to me it's the same difference the Chinese government is responsible for it And the only people who should be offended by that are people working within the Chinese government or People taking the side of the Chinese government over their own country in which case I'm glad you're offended I don't like you we are not friends. I actually, I want to talk about that first, but really quick, we are going to go over how the left and the media are defending China and attacking the Trump administration by saying he's racist and mean, why they're doing it, how this all started, how China lied about and tried to cover up the crisis, how our politicians made us vulnerable to this, and why China should be considered our enemy. I guess they sort of already are considered to be our enemy. A lot of people don't really think about who our enemies are anymore. Have you noticed that? Like, we must have some enemies, right? So then who, who might they be? if they exist and why are they our enemies? What does it mean to be American? What does it mean to have American identity? Like, do we even have one? Do we believe in putting America first or are we just globalists? And I think our polarization as a country can be in part ascribed to our lack of a national enemy, like as a result of globalization. Like we no longer define ourselves by what we oppose. We're no longer opposite to the British or opposite to the Nazis or opposite to the communists. Now, as we've embraced globalization and multiculturalism, we seek to define ourselves by our progress relative to other nations. The difference being that in the past, the American American people took pride in our differences to other countries and this idea of American exceptionalism, but in the present, the American people feel guilty for cultural and societal anomalies, and we often think to ourselves that, well, okay, since the rest of the world has adapted to this particular position, we cannot simply just be operating independently. No, we must be falling behind. And what makes transitioning from this complicated is that since the presence of distinct cultural identities throughout the Western world has diminished, what we would have traditionally defined as values to which we are in opposition can be better found within our own institutions than within the national anthem or constitution of like another country, right? The biggest enemy of the United States has taken many forms, gone by many names, whatever. Fundamentally, it can be best and most obviously defined by simply that which seeks to undermine the well-being of the American people and the preservation of their values. The problem that we're facing in the 21st century, which our generation or my generation is going to have to solve, is that our enemies have infiltrated our educational systems, our universities, our media, our entertainment, and every level of our government. So they don't have to be colluding. Uh, they don't even have to share the same strain of ideology. 
All that matters is that they have in common this aforementioned disdain for American exceptionalism. And I've been thinking about that a lot uh, this week as I've been watching how our media and our politicians have been reacting to this whole thing. And I figured that we'd go through some of the highlights that I found in different articles just to just to sort of illustrate exactly what we're dealing with here. So you've got the New York Times criticizing Trump for restricting entry into the United States from China because it's going to disrupt the stock market and the supply lines and that doing so is simply an emotional or political reaction. And this is funny to me because it assumes that had we not restricted travel and this virus was just allowed to spread completely unimpeded, that the stock market would not have been hit even worse or the same with the supply line. So yeah, great reporting there, as always from the New York Times. And then you've also got from the Washington Post, uh, they're reporting on the World Health Organization's complaint that we're not showing enough empathy. And I've also seen a lot of stuff talking about these supposed health experts claiming that restricting travel isn't going to work. And that's sort of a ridiculous thing to print because from what I've seen, they're basically saying that you won't be able to prevent the virus from spreading 100% of the time and also that restricting travel could cause social tension. And it's like, that sort of ignores the fact that restricting travel has a very large effect at reducing the potential spread of the virus and also that the Trump administration, thank God, doesn't give a damn about your manufactured social tension. You guys can keep whining all you want. But at the end of the day, he's going to do what's best for the American people. And here's some more gems just, just from the New York Times. You've also got articles claiming that this is causing hatred and bias towards Chinese people. And of course, their only evidence for this is anecdotal, mostly from Twitter. And if Jesse Smollett taught us anything, it's that people never lie to forward their political agendas. Also, it's important to note that it's literally impossible to be racist against Chinese people because the Chinese are not, in fact, a race of people. But you've even got Wikipedia retconning the page on the 1918 Spanish flu, changing it to the 1918 influenza pandemic just to preserve the present narrative. And I know that there's not exactly consensus as to where the Spanish flu actually started, but the idea that we're just going to update the historical record over a century later because, oh, well, there's no way to know exactly where the disease came from while we're also trying to get people to stop calling coronavirus a Chinese virus, even though we know for a fact that it came from China and only spread because of the Chinese government. That's just absurd to me. You've even got people on NBC trying to cover that up. You had the uh, the correspondent guy, and he went on a rant about how, oh, well, this is a virus that came from the territory of China, but it came from bats. It's a bat virus. It's not a China virus. It doesn't speak Chinese. It doesn't target Chinese people. Yeah, brilliant analysis, big guy. No one thinks the virus only targets Chinese people or that it speaks. The reason we're saying it came from China is to hold the Chinese government accountable for this. And as we're about to talk about, they're very much at fault. But even at President Trump's press conference, as you saw in the beginning, these people cannot help themselves from obfuscating the details of this pandemic, not only to hurt their political opponents and as a result, their countrymen, but to literally help the Chinese. And, and the Chinese people love this. I mean, you've got Chinese news outlets, which is something of an oxymoron, but uh, still they're saying, oh, it's a distraction tactic. Yes, it's racist, but he's doing it. So people are talking about that instead of his lies and incompetence. And I, I actually could not believe that they use those words. The Chinese ascribing lies and incompetence to President Trump within the context of the coronavirus is like quite literally the biggest projection in the history of projections. Like the reason this happened is because the Chinese are incompetent. And the reason it was allowed to exacerbate is because the Chinese are liars. And every time I say the Chinese or something like that, I'm talking about the Chinese government. If you want to talk to people who like really cannot stand the Chinese government, talk to Chinese people living in America because you're not going to be able to hear anything negative if they're living in China. But that's the whole reason this happened. It's two parts. It's very simple. China lied, people died. China lied, people died. China identified COVID-19 all the way back in November. They lied about their containment of the virus. They refused help from the CDC. They destroyed the results of testing. And then they put Dr. Li Wenliang in jail for trying to blow the whistle on the whole thing, which ultimately resulted in his death. They destroyed evidence of the virus. They censored any doctors who tried to talk about it. They spread disinformation about the virus, like, oh, it can't actually be spread from human to human. And they allowed the free travel of 5 million people from the Wuhan region. That's why it's the Chinese virus. It's the Chinese virus because it's their fault. And I want them to take responsibility for it on the world stage. And there was a study published this month uh, that indicated that if Chinese authorities had acted three weeks earlier than they did, the number of coronavirus cases could have been reduced by 95% in its geographic spread limited. But they didn't. And now our country's crippled, which, you know, maybe that's not bad news for them. Maybe it's not bad news for the left either. I mean, they certainly seem to be having a blast raking in all that ad revenue from running the anti-Trump stories, blaming him for the virus, blaming him for racism against the Chinese. People are glued to the internet, waiting for updates, and they're exploiting that for their political and financial gain. And the Chinese couldn't be happier about it. We already talked about the one statement they put out. They've also been directly thanking people like Hillary Clinton for spotting the same anti-Trump rhetoric. And it's funny because, you know, 
This must be the biggest relief for them. Imagine being Chinese and knowing that all you have to do to absolve yourself of responsibility in the eyes of the West is say something to the effect of, uh, racism? And the left goes, Ra where? Racism against the Chinese race? Oh, well, I guess we're gonna have to overlook the fact that the Chinese have created a pandemic through their own incompetence and lies because if anyone criticizes that, it's racist. Like, it blows my mind. We've got almost one in five Americans out of the job or having their hours cut. And all these people wanna talk about is how the Chinese people might have their feelings hurt. I couldn't give a damn, frankly. We have to prioritize. Not all countries are equal and not all cultures are equal. I mean, the NBC guy even alluded to this earlier. He said, well, yeah, the virus came from China, but it actually came from a bat. It's like, okay, riddle me this. How exactly did the virus make it from bat to person? Did the bat bite them? Or is it more likely that someone ate it? I'm sorry if it's offensive to stigmatize certain cultural practices, but I think an argument could be made that eating animals that are notoriously diseased is not a very good idea. I mean, these are the same people that get on Twitter like, ha ha, ha white people don't season their chicken. And it's like, yeah, but Chinese people eat f***ing bats, and now we're all going to die because of it. I mean, there was even an article published back in 2017 for Smithsonian Magazine entitled, Is China Ground Zero for a Future Pandemic? And it talked all about how these Chinese wet markets are often poorly ventilated with multiple species jammed together, which creates ideal conditions for the spread of disease uh, through shared water utensils or airborne droplets of blood and other secretion, whatever. I think we can all look back now and think, hmm compelling. So yeah, here it is, folks. Here's your reminder that this is literally the fault of China and also the fault of our politicians that enabled this to happen. The fact of the matter is that the Chinese people abuse animals and, and eat disgusting things. And I'm sorry if this offends you to hear, but taking a field trip to Panda Express with your coworkers for lunch every other Friday does not make you an authority on the culinary practices of the Chinese people. And the fact of the matter is also that our politicians and our elites sent our jobs overseas, which opened the doors for mass immigration and kept our supply lines dependent on others, all at the expense of, you guessed it, the American people. Oh, but John, oh, but John, we got products for cheap. Couple things. Firstly, there is more to life than consuming products. I often think that the conservative tendency to default to, oh, but look at all these cool products. It's just a coping mechanism because we've allowed every other component of conservatism to fail. So we have to put everything we have left into the fact that, oh, capitalism works. Duh. And then we also have to find meaning in our lives through consumerism as a result. Secondly, you're not making an argument for offshoring. You're actually making an argument for uh, a reduction in domestic regulation so that it's advantageous for businesses to open and operate in America, which I'm sure is something upon which we could agree. Lastly, Ann Coulter wrote a really good piece for Breitbart recently entitled Cheap TV's Expensive Flu. And I think that makes a really good point. One of the first things that you will learn in economics is there's no such thing as a free lunch. And the lesson there is basically that everything has a cost. And just because the explicit cost isn't as great doesn't mean that there aren't other costs for which you will have to factor. Here are some examples of what globalization has brought us. Toothpaste made with a poison found in antifreeze. Toxic drywall that was installed in about 100,000 American homes and also emitted noxious fumes that destroyed electrical wiring and metal fixtures and caused homeowners to become sick. And the damages cost us billions of dollars, by the way. We've had hundreds, possibly thousands of American dogs killed by melamine-laced Chinese dog food. We've lost hundreds of thousands of maple trees because of the Asian long-horned beetles that arrived on Chinese cargo ships in 1996, which cost us hundreds of millions in taxpayer dollars to eradicate. But the outbreaks actually continue to this day despite despite the Chinese assuring us that they'll do better. Oh, and then of course, all of the viral pandemics, H1N1, bird flu, SARS, and now the Wuhan virus. But remember kids, China has nothing to do with this. That's what the media tells us. Which part of Italy has been most devastated by coronavirus? Lombardy, okay. Which part has the highest concentration of Chinese immigrants, same part? Gotcha. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand why we can't all come together as a country you know, Scarface mode, like, dash them, dash the bad guy. Like, why are, why are they defending China? Why are they defending our enemy? It's like we talked about in the beginning. Perhaps the reason they're working with our enemies against us is because they don't, in fact, want us to succeed. Like, do you think that we can reasonably infer that from their behavior? The Chinese don't like us. They don't like the West. They blame us for what they call uh, their century of humiliation. They steal our technology. They spy on us. They effectively partner with companies that manufacture lethal drugs like fentanyl by allowing them to ship it into our country illegally. What does our country care? Hollywood, the NBA, they're all more than willing to sell out to them. Even Google will refuse to take contracts with the Department of Defense, but they will gladly take contracts from the Chinese government and from the Chinese military. And this is all a huge threat to our political, social, and economic sovereignty. But even taking all of that into context, what is the media concerned about? Offending people. It's like these people are so educated that they can no longer function in the real world. They have learned so much unnecessary information for the purpose of feeling superior to the average American that if you ask them, hey, uh, what should we do to prevent the disease from getting into the country? 
well, when you're analyzing the components of international crisis, we must be starting to take into account the social cost of, of making decisions, which could interpe- It's like, no, no, you imbecile. You look at the place where the disease is, and you think, hmm, no more from there. It's really not that hard. You just have to get your head out of your sociology textbook for five minutes, you nerd. Stop selling out your country to make yourself feel better. Have some inflexibility for once. I'll tell you what, I'm calling for a complete and total shutdown of people going into humanities until we can figure out what the hell is going on. Like, oh, what's that? The whole world is infected? Okay, great. Let's just close the borders. This is so obvious to most people. Literally, you could ask the hot dog lady at Home Depot and she would tell you the same thing. Like, excuse me, um, do you think that we should close the border or just like, I don't know, leave it open when we've got this whole global pandemic thing? And she's going to be like, hmm, close. Did you want ketchup and mustard? Yeah. Because I'm not a communist. Actually, no, 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 no. Can I have bat intestine on my hot dog? Like, can I have the intestine of a bat? Can I have that on my hot dog? Can I have the actual entrails of one of the most notoriously diseased animals in the world, please? I'm trying to be more cultured. Remember, kids, all cultures are equal. And we're going to keep repeating it to you until you can't tell the difference between a Big Mac and a bowl of bat soup. That's where we're at right now, and it's disgusting. And I'm not talking about the average Democrat voter. I'm talking about the people pulling the strings, the people orchestrating this garbage media coverage. They're thriving on this. They even said that they hoped for an economic collapse, that they hoped for some catastrophe because they wanted something that could hurt Donald Trump. I don't know how we can ever be friends or countrymen with those types of people again. Frankly, I don't know that we should even want to be. There are things with which I disagree on principle that I've been in support of during this pandemic because I can understand that sometimes we have to put ideology aside for the good of the American people. And if that means, you know, the markets aren't as totally unregulated as I'd like, maybe there's some price controls, maybe there's some redistribution of wealth. Okay, fine. I'm open to that. I'm open at least. That's unreciprocated. They've actually used this pandemic to argue that things should be even more ideologically left than they already are. There is no compromise with them, not because we're stubborn, but because there's no overlap. Part of loving America and wanting to put America first is that you love the American people. But when you don't subscribe to that, when you don't care about the American people, let alone America, because you're a globalist, that means that the people who don't conform to your worldview will have to be excluded or eliminated from it. You have to understand that the political landscape of this country is no longer two parties both trying to move the country in a different but still positive direction. You've got one party trying its best to maintain and preserve whatever it can, and another party trying to literally uproot the foundations of this country and transform it into something completely unprecedented to where it will be unrecognizable. It will be a shell of the country that it used to be. Hey guys, if you like this video, the best thing that you can do is a couple things. Actually, a few things because I'm going to say three. Four. What's four? A set? You can do a set of things. Who knows? Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. Leave a thumbs up also below, but not as below as the comment section. And then, of course, turn on notifications, which is adjacent to the subscribe thing because YouTube is not going to want you to see this video or future videos because uh, I kind of said some, some choice things about YouTube and Google and China and coronavirus and all that fun stuff. So there's that. We might do a charity stream. I kind of just want to do a, a relaxed stream, maybe next Friday, next Saturday night, play some Super Mario 64 or something, collect Super Chats and just give all the money to charity, help people who need toilet paper and ground beef and whatnot. We'll think about it. I mean, we'll probably will. Just spread the word. Count on it. We'll see. Follow me on Twitter. Stay updated. Whatever. This is going too long. We should just do, I should do it like a 20 minute video and then just 18 minutes is just this. This is the best content. The people that stick around at the end, they know this is the best content. But thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. 